Hello guys and gals, it's Solfax here, and welcome to another War Thunder video. Wait, this isn't War Thunder. Why did you trick us? I didn't actually trick you, it's all in the title of the video. This is World of Warship, my first video on this video game. Now you might be wondering, why in the hell's name am I doing World of Warships when War Thunder is going to be receiving its navy in a couple of months, maybe in a year or so? Well, the simple answer is I need to get prepared for the addition of navy in War Thunder. Now, I know a lot about the tanks and the aircraft that are currently in War Thunder, and in the same vein, I know a lot about tanks that are currently in World of Tanks. Well, to less degree, because World of Tanks has a lot of tanks that never actually existed. But... What I'm trying to say is I need some way, I need something to incentivize me to actually start learning about the different kinds of ships that were present in World War II and before World War II, because a lot of ships that are in World of Warship and a lot of ships that sh served, <laughs> a lot of ships that served in World War II, I just went total Sean Connery there for a couple of seconds, a lot of ships that served in World War II were made well before World War II and some even before World War I and served in World War I. So yeah, that's why I'm basically playing this game. And other than that, it's a very fun game. So as we go through this re replay, I'm going to try to explain a little bit about how World of Warship works and why it's so much different from all the other wargaming product out there. I'm going to be keeping this very simple because there is a big chance that most of you already played either World of Tanks or Armored Warfare. In case you didn't, well, tough luck, just Google it. So this game is very similar in format to World of War World of Tanks and, of course, Armored Warfare. This is your box standard PvP match where you have two choices to win a match. You can either destroy the whole entirety of the enemy team, or you can capture the points and hold them until you accumulate enough points for victory. And there's another twist to this. As you can see on that screen there, for every single ship that you sink on the enemy team, you will gain a certain amount of points, and a certain amount of points will be detracted from the enemy's team total of points. And that brings a whole other level of tactics in this game, which you really need to consider whether it's worth it trying to sink the enemy ship... ship? Sheep? <laughs> it's just funny, I'm sorry. You need to consider whether it's worth trying to sink the enemy ship, and... <laughs> I did it again! Okay, okay, concentrate. You need to consider whether or not it is worth to sink the enemy ship and risk your own ship getting sunk by them. That was so hard to say. I don't know what it is about sheeps and me. But anyhow, in this match I am driving. I think that's how you say it. I'm driving or maybe I'm sailing in. But it doesn't have sails. Anyhow, I'm driving in the St. Louis, which is a tier 3 American heavy cruiser. It's just a cruiser, but it's a heavy cruiser because it's got a lot more health and some armor, which some cruisers at this low tier don't have. Now, talking about cruisers, let me just tell you about the four different types of ship that we have in World of Warships. There are four main types of ships in World of Warships. So starting from the smallest and working our way to the biggest, we have the destroyers. Destroyers are your equivalent of light tanks in World of Warships. They have little to no armor, they're highly maneuverable, and they have small caliber fast firing cannons. They also get torpedoes from tier 1, while some other cruisers and even some battleships get torpedoes at later tiers, only destroyers get them at tier 1. Another thing that is special to the destroyers is that it can deploy a smoke screen which can be used to hide yourself and your teammates from direct visual content, thus preventing them from being spotted. The next type of ship by weight are cruisers, and just like destroyers are meant to kill battleships, cruisers are designed to kill destroyers. Now what's special about the cruisers is the cruisers are the happy medium between the armor and the firepower of battleships and the speed and mobility of destroyers. Cruisers usually get medium caliber cannons that are very fast firing, they get a sizable amount of health and they get some semblance of armor. They're also the second fastest type of ship in World of Warships. They will not outrun most destroyers, but they will easily outrun most boat carriers and battleships. They also get torpedoes at later tiers, around tier 4 in most nations. But what's really special about them is that they get a special ability called the Defensive Unarmament ability, I think, or Defensive Cooldown ability, or whatever you want to call it. It's basically the ability to use the secondary unarmament on this ship, which usually consists in most cruisers of 75 and 100mm cannons for anti the aircraft duty, which makes them very effective at escort battleships and protecting them from torpedo bombers and dive bombers. Now we come to the big boys, the battleships. The battleships are definitely the top dogs in most World of Warship matches. They have the highest amount of health, they have the thickest armor, and then they have the biggest, biggest cannons in this game. But they also have a lot of flaws. They're not very fast and they're not very maneuverable, which means that they're extremely vulnerable to torpedoes and dive bombers, both air launch torpedoes and water surface launch torpedoes. I don't know how to call those things. 
They also don't have very impressive anti-aircraft environment, which means that they're even more vulnerable to those things. And what's special about them is they have a repair ability, which means that when they take some damage, they can recover some health. But that health is very precious because if you're on fire or if you're getting shot, the regeneration from the repair ability will decrease and you can just basically use it as a health buffer at some times without even regaining some health, but negating some damage. I've already mentioned aircraft a few times in this video, so if that made you think that you can fly in an aircraft and bomb ships, unfortunately you can't, but you can control them after you launch them from your airship carrier. Yes, there are aircraft carriers in World of Warships, and from what I hear, they're awesome. You don't control them like any other type of ship in World of Warships, you control them with an RTS, a real-time strategy type of control scheme, where you control your airship carrier individually, and you need to control every single one of your aircrafts in different aircraft groups. Now, I don't know much about airship carriers because I haven't unlocked them yet, so I can't talk about them at length, but I will probably discuss them in the next video that I do. But yeah, that's all you need to know so far about World of Warships. I'll talk about it later in another video, but let's talk about this replay first. So, I mentioned earlier that I'm driving the St. Louis, which is a Tier 3 American cruiser. And it's actually a heavy cruiser, and it's heavy for a reason. If you look at the health pool of this thing on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see it's 29,500. That is more than some Tier 5 cruisers, and that's what makes it a heavy cruiser, I think, at least. But also, this is probably one of the better cruisers tier for tier, in my opinion. It is most definitely my favorite cruiser in World of Warships so far. But what makes it so good is not that it's got so much health. What makes it so good is that it's got so many cannons. When you fully upgrade this thing with both the hull upgrade and the uh, cannons upgrade, it, get up, it gets up to 14 152mm cannons. That is a lot, even for a cruiser at this bad rating. But when you consider that you can only fire 8 of those cannons at one target at one time, it does sound a little bit less impressive. But, those cannons only have 6 seconds reload time. Which means that you can, in some cases, put one salvo in the air, and before that salvo lands on the target, another salvo is already firing from your cannons. Overall, the St. Louis is one of the better cruisers, tier for tier, at least so far, that I've played in World of Warships. It does lack a little bit about in the maneuverability and the range department, but other than that, it's probably the best tier 3 cruiser in the game, and it's so much fun to play. And you just keep landing salvo after salvo on the enemy with all of those 8 152mm cannons that you can fire at them, and just rack up all of those damage and start all of those fires and battleships. It's just so satisfying to play. But there on the other side of the map, we see the Bane of St. Louis. Those are Wyoming's, that's a tier 4 American battleships. And what's so dangerous about Wyoming's when you're driving around in a St. Louis is that their cannons have 4 kilometers more range than your main cannons. Which means that you can get too close to them or you're actually risking yourself getting shot by 350mm cannons, which can easily one-shot you. But here there is another cruiser that's gotten dangerously close to my range, and he's on very low health, so I reload, high explosive, I put in some lead, a little bit too much, but that's enough to get a couple of shells to land, and I pick up my first kill. Now, I've told you before that kills are very important in a World of Warships match, but if you look at the team scores right now, we're, all, we're only down 3 ships, and the enemy has got half the amount of points that we have. But that can change in an instant, because we have four battleships, they have four battleships, and battleships, uh, actually they have three battleships, we have three battleships, they have four battleships, that's the other way around. Why am I messing this up? I don't know. Battleships are extremely potent, and in some cases, like in this case, if that Wyoming was to shoot at me and connect with some of his shells, he could easily one-shot me at a range that I can't shoot at him. So, in some cases, like in this match, in this situation where I'm running away from the Wyoming, it's more important to stay alive than try to sink the enemy ship. So far, this match is going very well for our team. We've already elim eliminated more than half of the enemy team, and they only have five ships left. And two of those are air aircraft carriers, so they can't engage directly in the combat. They can only try to support their battleships by killing enemy battleships. But yeah, at this point in time, we're controlling the B and the C cap point, and most of the enemy is concentrated on the north and northwest part of the map. Now, I see that Wyoming behind the island, and I'm locking onto him. He's getting peppered by that cruiser to my right, and I'm just waiting for the moment where that Wyoming says, okay, I've had enough of it, I'm getting out of here. It's gonna come very quickly here, and here he starts moving behind the island. 
I turn my ship around because I know that his cannons are not pointing at me because he was pointing at that other cruiser and I start lighting them up. Now, there's a case to be said about firing AP at battleships, but with only 152mm cannons, firing armor-piercing shells at battleships is not very smart because most of your shells will not penetrate. But, if you're firing high explosive, you will set the battleship on fire numerous times and you will be able to do a lot of damage through just just like spamming the ship with a lot of high explosive shells because that in the end is eight 152 millimeter high explosive shell. Unfortunately I didn't get enough time to kill this Wyoming outright because he's going to be hidden from me behind that island. But luckily for me I did set him on fire I think in two different locations and fire in World of Warships is very dangerous. If the enemy doesn't have their damage control ability available to them the fires keep on burning until the crew puts them out and that can take up to a minute. Now, as soon as I was done with that Wyoming, I turned my attention to the other Wyoming that popped into range. I don't know how I didn't notice him before, it's probably just tunnel vision. But this Wyoming is very dangerous, but luckily for me, his cannons are not pointing in my directions. And there I get the kill on the first Wyoming, he burned to death, yay for high explosive. So he's trying to shoot at that other cruiser there and completely ignoring me even though I am the biggest threat currently on our team other than the battleships. Well to this guy I am the biggest threat because I'm just constantly pepper him with high explosive and setting him on fire f more quickly than he can actually extinguish those fires. Now the second Wyoming is in big trouble. He currently has the attention of three cruisers, now excuse me, two cruisers and one battleship. And one of those cruisers actually got sunk now, but that is not a big issue because from the two tanks, tanks, listen to me, from the two ships that can still fight against our ships on our side, two of them are at very low health and this battleship right here is going to be going to get torpedoed out of existence in just a couple of seconds. Unfortunately, I don't get the kill on this guy, even though I did like 80% of the damage on him, but that's okay, I still get the credit for the damage. So I've entered the A point, I'm going to cap it, and at this point in time the match is over. The only remaining cruiser on the enemy team that can actually fight us is on a slimmer of health, and he can't do anything against four destroyers and a cruiser, and one of those cruisers is me, so yeah baby, what? Attempted humor failed. Oh, there's a cruiser! I tried to put some shots into him and just to finish him off like I finished off that first cruiser, but unfortunately he hides behind the island and I don't get the kill. And I will end this match with only two kills, but you will see at the end of the match how much damage I actually did to what kind of ships in the St. Louis. Now with that cruiser dead by this battleship, the only two ships remaining on the enemy team are F A the only two ships remaining on the enemy team are aircraft carriers, and one of those carriers is going to make this battleships to my right life very very difficult. So you see those torpedo bombers, yes, and the battleships is like the battleships is requesting for support, and I try to steam in his general direction. Unfortunately, I don't get there in time, and the dive bombers manage to get their bombs away. But this battleship driver isn't all that stupid. He's already turning, trying to anticipate where the torpedoes are going to be launched, and he manages to dodge all but one of those torpedoes, but at the same time, the same carrier launches another set of torpedoes directly in this guy's way, and those are so close, they're going to hit him and the match ends. <laughs> and the battleship actually managed to survive this match with torpedoes that were most definitely going to kill them, like literally millimeters away from his ship, well not millimeters, like meters away from his ship, but you get the point. So we win the match, I get two kills, and I did. 33,000 damage, which is a lot in a ship that only has 152mm cannons, but if you fire high explosive and you be a noob and just like set everything on fire, you can do a whole lot amount of damage. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, there will be more like this to come. My name has been Solfax and I will see you next time. Goodbye.